So you were you were just talking about the ways that these uh, these liturgies form us, or the, they're the water that we mm -hmm. that we swim in. Our desires are always already being shaped. Um, and you talked about the way that, that ideas can actually be a sort of point, a leverage point of intentionality. Um, but our ideational lives, <laughs> the things we think about, and I don't care whether we're 13 or 25 or, or however old we are, our ideas, and that's part of your whole argument, mm. is that our ideas aren't as self-standing as we think they yeah, are. Right. They're always being shaped by these sorts of uh, these sorts of uh, desires and liturgies and everything. So, so, so it actually makes me worried. Do I actually have the sort of leverage that you're talking <laughs> yeah, about, yeah. or is it all sort of determined from the beginning? How do we how do we make genuine change? Well, may, maybe this is one of the instances too where we realize that the pluralist kind of context you're describing um, is a gift, mm -hmm. right? Because in, in a sense, encountering rivals is a catalyst for me to ask, why am I doing this and what am I sort of swimming in? Mm -hmm. uh, that, that might be um, its own sort of hook uh, to, to new intentionality. Um, I think, I, I mean, I guess this is also why I love the liberal arts. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. It just seems to me that the goal of a liberal arts education is uh, kicking me out of my just default settings and challenging me to ask questions of myself that I hadn't asked before. There, there's this great passage where in the Augustine's Confessions in Book 8 where he says it's like God took him sort of by the scruff of the neck and turned him and made him look at himself. And that's kind of what reflection is, right? And, and um, But are, you're asking how would I choose between well, let's let we'll get there in a second. Okay. Okay. Let, let's just start with like even suppose I know what vision I I want. Yes. Like how do I how do I get the sort of purchase you're talking about? I can't leave the proverbial mall entirely. Right. Right. I right. can't get out yes. of the water yes. that I'm swimming in. So even the sort of like leverage that we're hoping we can purchase ideationally, like. Is is that is that an is that an illusion? Yeah. <laughs> do, do you do you think it makes a difference if we are imagining this happening in a community rather than the solitary individual? Mm. So uh, this this is maybe not exactly what you're talking about, but part of what um, I often think about is yeah the, the the things that are probably the most influential on me, the closest to me are precisely the things that I can't see, right? Because they're, mm -hmm. they're so close to me, they fall outside my own view, um, peer purview. Uh, which is exactly why I need other people to point them out mm -hmm. to me. Now, we probably don't like that very much, but uh, um, uh, it, it does seem to me that there, there, there is a gift in communal uh, interaction on these things where I probably need the other person to leverage my immersion, uh, and and we should um, work at being a kind of people who can accept that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the yeah. the gift of the prophetic critique. Um, would would that be one way, maybe, of breaking out of our ideo ideational echo chambers? Yeah, that 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 I have a lot of hope for that, mm. Um, mm. and that seems like why a sort of group context, whether it's a, a youth group or. Uh, a seminar yes. or a college, campus yes. ministry or a church or yes. whatever sort yes. of context we're talking about, that is, uh, that's what's so, that's part of what's so valuable. And, and, and just when you put it that way too, it also strikes me this could be one of the real gifts of multi-generational engagement. As, mm. as long as every generation is mutually open to the lever, right? Because mm. um, it could be that interacting with folks from an older generation can be a gift to young people, but it, it goes the other way too, right? And mm -hmm. I, I think that could be um, its own sort of liberation from our defaults. Yeah, and it seems like that, that's where you build trust with, with each generation. If, it, if it's genuinely bi-directional or multi-directional, um, then, it, then it's not a matter of, you know, come to church and learn to listen to your elders, right? It's like, yes, you know, come exactly. into this dynamic community right. in which we're learning and, and, right. and from one another Absolutely. as we grow into the likeness of Christ. It's great.